This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice tasks for Objective 5.2, Formatting Charts. Let's get started. With our 5.2 workbook open, uh, we want to uh, display our sales worksheet, which is the uh, first worksheet, the one on the left on the list at the bottom. And uh, you guys are going to have to forgive me. Uh, we're going to do a lot of things uh, in this video that uh, normally I would recommend against. Uh, but you may get asked to do it in the exam, uh, so I will go through all those steps with you, even though I may disagree with uh, the results that, that come from doing them. So the first thing we want to do is change the pie chart to a 3D clustered column chart. Uh, a couple ways we can do this. First is by right-clicking on our chart once it's selected. We can go to Change Chart Type uh, from our contextual menu that pops up. The other thing we can do is in our Design tab of the ribbon, we can go into change chart type here as well. So once we select that, instead of uh, a pie, we're going to select a different option in the call in this list, and we're going to select column. And we actually want a 3D clustered column chart. Uh, so as we hover over these, it'll give us the name of the column or of the style. And here we have a 3D clustered column. It's the fourth one over. So when I select that, I will click OK. And now we've converted that from a pie to this uh, 3D chart. Uh, but don't ever do this in real life. All right, next, we want to apply Layout 1 Style 7 to the chart. So our layouts are in our Design tab on the ribbon in this Quick Layout section here. Uh, there are some layout options, and you might find some of these better than what you had previously. I, I'll, I'll be frank, I've never really looked at these. Um, I typically develop a style I like, save it as a template, and then, uh, then continue to use it. So we'll go to Layout 1 here. The next thing we want to do is select a style number 7. And so here are our chart styles at the top on this Design tab of my ribbon. And uh, they're in numerical order. So style one is on the left. As we go across, we can move here to style seven. And you'll notice as I as I move them over there, they are going to change and it, it does update live. So I can kind of go along until I see something I like. In this case, I've been told to go right to style seven. And so now we have style seven here displayed. Next, we want to apply the subtle effect. Uh, which is a bit of a misnomer. I don't know if uh, anything, any Excel preset that is particularly subtle. Uh, but instead of being on the design tab of our ribbon, these are on the format tab. And so here are our shape styles. We can click this drop down, and here are our options. Um, and we want a subtle effect. So of all of these, I'm going to guess that that's the subtlest, and sure enough, it tells me that that is the subtle effect. Olive green, accent three. Next, we want to increase the size of our chart. Um, and so how we do that is just by hovering over one of the corners after we've selected the chart. We can click and drag and increase our size. So there's all the way to A1 and now down to L23. So that whole area is covered. Next, we're going to move it onto a new chart sheet. So in this case, this chart is is embedded or, or floating on a normal worksheet. Um, so we can do other Excel calculations in, in these cells, or even the cells that are behind it are still active and working. But what we can do is move this from this sheet and move it to a, a different location. And, and again, there's a couple ways we can do it. One is through our chart tools. We can go to the Move Chart option, or we can go to Move Chart after we've right-clicked inside our chart area. So once we do that, it gives us our options. Do we want it an object in this worksheet? I could actually move it just to the Seattle worksheet or to, to any other worksheets that are in our workbook. In this case, they want it on a new sheet, and they would like us to name it Sales Chart. Once I click OK here, we now have an, a new tab on the bottom of our workbook that called Sales Chart. And when I go to this, all it does is show that, that lovely sales chart that we've prepared. And uh, 
on our sales tab, there's no longer a chart present. Next, we're going to go to our Seattle worksheet, and we want to add a title. So we'll go to Seattle, and with my chart selected, we're going to go into our design, add chart element, chart title, and we'll do it above the chart. Uh, and we will, what we would like to call this is Air Quality Index Report. So this doesn't update live on the chart. You'll see it up here in the formula bar. Once I hit enter, though, it does move on to the chart. Lastly, we'll add data labels. labels. It'll show the percentage of the whole that is represented by each data marker. Uh, so on this sheet, all we need to do is click on our our chart, or in this case, the pie chart. Once I've done that, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go down to add data labels. And once I've done that, we now have data labels added. So in this case, these are, um, are, are the actual values from our table over here that are showing up. And we've been instructed to show the percentage. Uh, so if I select and click on any of the, the data labels, um, they all highlight as a group. I'll right click on it. And now what I want to do is format the data labels. So there's a bunch of options here. Uh, it's tough to read, but that says value is highlighted. I'm going to click the percentage. And now when I go back to this, it uh, this this is very similar to what's uh, in your, your final uh, re request. Um, now it's showing both the value and the percent, which is which is very redundant. Uh, and so what I would do is I would go back in here, I would format these, and I would get rid of the value because I, you know, we don't need both of them. Um, now what you can do by clicking once, you've selected all of the labels. If you, for whatever reason you wanted to, if I now just go to this label and I format this, I can actually uh, change just that one. Uh, and not all of them as a group. So you do have a little bit of flexibility when you're doing the labeling there. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you on our final set of videos for Objective 5.3. Make sure to give a thumbs up or, or share this if you think it's been valuable for you. And I, I, of course, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks for watching.